Never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Stop waiting for things to happen. Go out and make them happen. These were exactly the quotes that were running through my mind in early September of last year. See, I had been sitting on ideas for video game projects since my freshman year of college, but I simply had no time between a part-time job and full-time classes. This past September marks the five-month anniversary of my college graduation. Never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Stop waiting for things to happen. Go out and make them happen. How long would I wait to pursue the things that would truly give me fulfillment? On September 20th, 2023, I started to put pen on paper to build my first video game design document to start learning game development. Yeah, so the first week mostly consisted of writing down what I wanted the game to be. This was important for a few reasons. Firstly, I have goldfish brain and writing my ideas down helps me retain information. Secondly, my concept of the game was very shallow at that point and writing it down would allow me to identify some of the flaws of my design and buff out some of the rough edges. I also added a journaling section at the bottom so that I could keep track of my milestones every week. I knew that I wanted to work with Godot since Unity just self-destructed a few weeks prior and Unreal cost money. I watched a few tutorials on YouTube to get a grasp of the layout of Godot and familiarize myself with the engine's quirks. I built a basic test level consisting of some blocks and a plain floor. I watched more tutorials specifically on how to create an FPS camera and player movement. And here are the results. Check it out. Um, I've got first person controls, first person controls. I can't do this while. Uh, uh, uh. Week two took a different route as I began my 3D modeling career. I, like with Godot, learned the layout of Blender and the bare essentials with a few smart people on YouTube. By the way, I will link a playlist of most of the tutorials I watched or thought were interesting if you guys wanted to check them out. With the help from YouTube people, I built a little guy. This little guy consisted of a mesh and a skeleton. You can combine those two things with the help of a weight painting. This tells the bones which part of the mesh to control. In week three, I put that little guy in the game. I spent most of my time working on and finishing my first gun model. If you couldn't tell by now, we're making an FPS game. Also, I started some initial work on the view model camera. In week four, I edited the little guy's mesh because his head and hands were weird. Also, I had to redo his hand bones. Also, I had to redo his weight painting. And that wraps up my first month of game development. I feel like it had a good balance of learning stuff, implementing new features, and creating new assets. The second month followed a theme of making shit in Blender and then importing it into Godot, with occasional features being added to the game here and there. But first I had to fix my character because this is horrendous. While doing this, I learned that square faces are better for soft body models because they're stretchy, and triangles are better for more rigid models simply because they're more efficient for the computer to render or something. So I remade my character's joints, and then I didn't like the result, so I remade them again, and I think the result speaks for itself. Week six was focused on animation. I learned how to add bones to the gun. Yes, guns have bones. Grow up. I made animations for drawing and firing. I think they look good enough for my first try. Back to Godot, I worked on procedural animation, specifically weapon sway based off mouse movement. I combined this with the animations I made in Blender. I think it looks really good. In week seven, I made my first reload animation. After exporting this animation, I realized I probably imported the blend models incorrectly since uh, this was happening. It's okay. All I needed to do was not import the inverse kinetics bones when exporting to Godot. And now it works fine. But Godot is still interpolating when I don't want it to. Interpolating being the process of adding frames in between the hand keyed ones. This makes it so that the animation can scale indefinitely depending on whatever frame rate you're playing on. This is great for most cases, but my reload animation pulls a magic trick and swaps the position of the mags within the span of two frames. It's supposed to be hidden, but interpolation ruins the trick. This is fine though, because Godot has the option to turn off interpolation per animation. This is great. I can turn off interpolation for the animations in which I use magic tricks and keep it on for the rest. That would be the case, but my version of Godot is bugged, so that button just simply doesn't exist on my version. I searched everywhere on the internet for a solution to this, and I even put a discussion post on Godot's Discord, but I couldn't find any help unfortunately. Also in week 7, I began work on projectiles. They're going really slow for demonstration purposes. Also, you could spam left click and fire a bunch of them at once, so I'll have to fix that. But not before, I added a spark effect for when a bullet hits something. This only ever worked 5% of the time, but it looks really cool when it did happen. 
Also, when you pause the game, your character now holsters their weapon and then draws it when the game is unpaused. At around the midway point of the week, I realized that I would have to have a few more weapons in the game in order to add more mechanics, like weapon swapping, weapon inventories, etc. Of course, I could just put in placeholder models and work on the mechanics first, like a normal person. So I took a break from Godot and began work on the model for a new weapon, the AKM. Okay, that's enough. Back to Godot. I made it so that you can't spam projectiles anymore. Much better. Okay, back to Blender. I worked on the animation for the Glock 17 for when you have no ammo. Like the animations that play when you try to reload, fire, and draw your weapon. I spent the entirety of week 9 working on the AKM model. Initially I was going to use the Bakelite magazine, like the green one, but I scrapped that halfway through and chose a stamped metal magazine instead. Okay, tangent time. Why the f*** is it so hard to find references and measurements for some of these weapons? Like, the AK is one of the most produced weapons in the world, and I don't know how wide it is. For this model, and the other model that I make later, I had to find other 3D game assets online and cross-reference there to find out certain dimensions, or like, I just have to eyeball it. Which is fine, I guess. Anyways, tangent over. Initially, in order to work on game development, I stopped making videos for YouTube entirely. It was during week 10 that I realized that I had missed making those videos. At this point, I decided to split my free time in half, alternating whether I worked on videos or game development every other week. So during week 10, I worked on videos. In week 11, I finished my YouTube video, and I finished my AKM model. From the beginning of the project, I've been striving for a low-poly art style, but I don't know, I get distracted in modeling every single detail of a weapon, so I hope that my art style doesn't derail in the future. Here it is really big. Looks kind of off, though. Oh, it's just because some of the faces are inverted. You can fix it by clicking some buttons in Blender, and then re-exporting. So that's two gun models done. Lastly is the M16. Also, I made a base pose for the AKM, so there's my guy holding it. Week 12 mostly consisted of me working on videos. The rest of the time this week I spent working on my M16 model. This was the point where I feel like I was starting to plateau with my project. I knew that these models had to get done, but I was just not interested at all in putting in the hours to finish them. What I was looking forward to was adding more features to the game, which wouldn't come by for a long time. I spent the entirety of my dev time in week 13 modeling the M16. Nights that were about 90% there. It wasn't until week 19 until I started working on my game dev project again. I finally finished my M16 model, which just has basic iron sights right now. There's a plan for weapon attachments down the line, but we'll cross that road when we get there. Going into week 20, I had all the weapons that I needed to start working on more features. One of those features being the weapons manager. For some reason, I forgot to record anything this week, but I basically just worked on the framework for the weapons manager and fixed a few bugs. One of them being that all my blend files disappeared randomly. I think when I updated my Godot to version 4.2, the Blender application reference was removed. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I fixed it eventually. With week 21, we were finally in the last month of the project. It was at this point I realized I had spent one month making a strand type game, two months making cute models, and two months of not even working on the project. <laughs> Your player now has a weapon inventory. I'm reusing the Glock animations for the AK right now. Don't worry about it. Check it out. You actually have a HUD. That stands for heads up display, just in case you didn't know. Reloading now does something instead of just looking cool. You have to reload when your ammo is empty. It also accounts for one in the chamber. This is similar to Battlefield and some Milstom games. Week 22, I just worked on some videos. In week 23, I replaced the physics-based bullets with hitscan. This is because the physics engine couldn't handle how fast and small my projectiles were. This is also why the spark effects weren't working correctly. Hitscan I think will be better for our project, and I'll make some tweaks and modifications to make it look like it actually is a physical bullet. In order to test out my new hitscan, I added some new objects to shoot at. Destructible barrels. These come in red and blue. Bullets now physically affect the objects they hit, and that's based off weapon caliber. So the AK will hit way harder than the pistol will. The red barrels are full of non-explodable oil and are heavy, while the blue ones are empty and therefore lighter. These barrels have health and get deleted if shot too much. I updated the weapon sway so that it is unique to each weapon. The sway amount is based on how heavy each weapon is. Okay, let me explain real quick how most hitscan guns work. Most games that use hitscan make the hitscan come from the center of your screen and then make it look like the bullets are coming out of the gun on screen. Some games even make an extra ray cast from the gun to the end point of the hitscan to see if anything would block the bullet. So if your gun's in front of a wall, it'll shoot the wall instead of whatever you're looking at. But it's just not real enough. You know what's real? The bullets coming out of the actual gun. 
So I actually spent a long time figuring this out because this shit is confusing and scary. But now the hitscan comes out of the gun. This will be super convenient too because recoil and sway on the weapon will directly translate to the accuracy of the gun. I also improved the weapon sway so it looks better now. I also added weapon rotation based inversely on weapon length. So the shorter the gun, the more the rotation. I also added walk sway. Also added some placeholder falling sway and then landing impact. Also some rudimentary procedural recoil. I made the hard decision to scrap my hand animated firing animations, but I think that the procedural ones have more potential in the long run and also fix the fire rate problem that previously plagued the weapon. Also the empty holster and draw animations have finally been implemented. I animated them along with the initial Glock animations, but I guess I just forgot to put them in. Also sprint animations have been added, but they're glitchy right now and I'll have to fix them in the next video. I love working on this project. I documented this process in order to give myself some accountability in regards to making stable progress every month, but I mean by no means was I trying to rush this. I'm glad I took the time to learn things, to understand them. If it takes me a month to make a model in Blender, so be it, as long as I'm learning and making progress in a skill. I know my end result doesn't look like other dev videos where they recreate Minecraft in 24 hours, but I'm proud of the work I've put in. I think this video might serve as a lesson to those who are interested in doing something a hobby, a project, or whatever. It doesn't have to be a game. That if you're progressing slower than others, making something that doesn't quite live up to your expectations, it's okay, because you're learning, and you're growing as a person. I fully intend to keep working on this project. I can't say how long, but I'd like to say until it's finished. Who knows when that'll be. Thank you for watching to the end of the video, and I'll catch you later.